So yeah, hi everyone. Um, Want to talk a little bit about finding some finding signal in an otherwise noisy space. Um, it kind of dovetails on what Connor said about there being, uh, you know, a lot of distractions in the space, uh, a lot of things that are competing for your attention, and uh, it can be hard to know what to pay attention to. Um, but there is a lot of opportunity. Uh, I don't really know the audience very well. I, I'm just going to assume that there's a decent cross section of like tech professionals and enthusiasts. Uh, I kind of, I prepared things assuming that uh, it's people who are relatively new to Web3 who are curious about it. Um, yeah. It, it actually is a, it's heavily much more on the Web2 side and we targeted JavaScript developers more so. So think of it as people who've heard of crypto but may not have had that much beyond exposure beyond that. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Vanessa. Yeah. yeah, that's that's great. That's what I'm. That's what I was hoping. I'm I'm, I'm glad to know that. Um, yeah. So so I would say that I'd say that we're we're in the sort of pioneering phase, uh, fueled mostly by speculation about what a decentralized future looks like. It's a it's a bit of a wild west. There's not a lot of regulatory clarity. Uh, there's a lot of noise, and I think that's because there's a a lot of money flying around, and at the core. There's a pretty strong and tight-knit group of builders, but if you've just wandered in, it can be, uh, I think it can be worse than a tourist trap. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of mid-level or like multi-level marketing type stuff going on. And, you know, everyone's trying to get you to buy the tokens that they hold. Um, in all the speculation, you'll likely find a high degree of risk and reward. And a lot of that revolves around, you know, potentially cutting edge technology that's supposed to disrupt the status quo of the internet as we know it, finance, and how we coordinate in society broadly. So uh, Web3 promises us that we'll have full control over what we own and how we interact with one another. Uh, but the reality is that the developer experience is pretty rough and so is the user experience. Um, and while there, while socially there's a lot of exuberance in the space, there's also a lot of confusion. And one thing I'm fairly certain about is that uh, the promise of Web3 uh, appears to be gradually unfolding. So, so my, uh, my name's Gavin Birch. Uh, the way that I fit into all this is that, um, you know, I've been in the space a while. A lot of, a lot of the time I actually spend as a lurker, uh, just learning. Um, but about three years ago, I was I became the first employee at Figment. Um, I was I was hired from Twitter. Um, yeah, you can you're probably you know most likely everybody who's listening now you're you're all listening through uh, Twitter Spaces, so you feel free to follow me on Twitter. I'm uh, Ether underscore Gavin. Um, but yeah, a lot of the activity happens in the space on Twitter. Um, Figment is a staking service provider. You might not know what staking is. Um, you know, feel free to ask me questions about that anytime. You can DM me, or you can. I don't know if there's a way to do it here in Twitter Spaces, but we can talk about staking if you want. Figment is the largest uh, in Canada and one of the largest in the world. Um, and through Figment, I've had uh, the opportunity and pleasure to work with um, upwards of 40 different like staking based chains or protocols in various capacities at, and at very various dif different stages of their development from you know their inception to well beyond their launch uh, and into mainnet um, and i've done a decent amount of work in governance so um, primarily in the uh, in, in the cosmos ecosystem i right now i'm working in the capacity of, of being a partner a vc uh, Figment invests in a lot of early stage uh, projects. Um, I'm also, I also do angel investments. I'm a proud Agoric investor. Um, I advise founding teams and I also do some writing as well. I like to do deep dives when I write uh, and surface what's important and write about it in a relatable way. And I think that's really important in this space because it's, uh, it's fairly complex, uh, paradigm shifting, and it's not well documented. Um, as I said, I'm a big fan of what uh, the Agoric team is building and how Agoric and its design principles could enable Web3 to grow more quickly and more safely. So um, with all the distractions, uh, it's it's good to get oriented. Um, and, and just a caveat, like I kind of think of myself as a the one-eyed guy 
in in the in the land of a lot of a lot of blind men, <laughs> and there are a lot of other people like me as well uh, that that are <laughs> that are also one-eyed people. Um, so take what I say and what others say with a grain of salt, because uh, yeah, it's uh, think- it's a weird and wild space. Gavin, one of the things that I've really enjoyed about getting to know you at different events that we've been attending is that you always push people to um, continuously evolve and learn in the space. And so every time people go to an event, you always ask them, what did you learn there? And I think kind of helping people with this mindset and approach to crypto could be useful. Like what what other tips for growth would you give to people entering the space? Yes, there's a lot of noise, but how do they become better and level up faster? Yeah, absolutely. And and Connor touched on that as well. I think you just with the right mindset of coming in to, to the space with a willingness to learn and a willingness to engage in conversations is really powerful. Um, I know that, that like I know I have a lot of introvert friends and uh, uh, loved ones. So uh, that could be terrifying. But, you know, the, the nice thing about being able to work uh, over the Internet, it means that you can kind of engage uh, through there are a lot of anonymous people or pseudo pseudonymous people. Uh, there are lots of ways in which you can engage at your own comfort level, um, but always with that kind of openness to learn and to kind of push yourself. And actually, one of the biggest things I think is that um, is that you will feel stupid. We all do constantly, and that's because we're literally making this up as we go. Uh, everybody is making all of this up as we go. So I don't know if that inspires confidence uh, in the space broadly, but it should in you as an individual, because um, because, you know, a lot of times when you ask, you feel like maybe your question's dumb. It's actually really great because um, coming at things naively is really uh, powerful because it questions a lot of the assumptions that other people have made. And um, it enables, it, it's the occasion for people to have to, to be challenged to articulate things in a concrete way um, to somebody who doesn't already necessarily have context. Uh, great, a really great way to do that is Twitter. Like I said, I got hired off of Twitter about three years ago. Um, a lot of the general conversations are happening on Twitter. So you probably already have a Twitter account, lean into that, um, learn how to use Twitter. Um, I've been really fortunate to follow a lot of great people who have shaped the way that I think about things and the opportunities that I've had and the conversations I've had. Um, If you want to get more involved in a specific project, a lot of the project teams operate off of Discord. Um, Telegram is useful for one-on-one conversations and for, um, you know, focused group chats. But like the, you know, the public Telegram channels are, can be cesspools, like they're not, there's a lot of noise there. I wouldn't recommend them. Um, discourse forums are, are good for, you know, kind of uh, working on research. ETH research is a really popular, famous one for really in-depth technical research. Um, and that's, you know, paved the way for a lot of development well beyond Ethereum itself. Um, there are two things to really pay attention to in the space, I think, that are very valuable. And that's decentralization and reputation. Um, there are two things that I really want to push here about decentralization. One is that it's, you'll hear people talk about it like it's a philosophy, but it's a lot more than a philosophy. I think it's a very concrete thing. It's, um, and, and the other thing is it's not the goal of the space. Um, I think it, it supports our goals, which is that I think we want strong guarantees that whatever solution it is that you're building will operate without being corrupted. And by corruption, I mean that it won't be captured, that it, um, that it'll may be able to sustain its properties of of being open and permissionless, and um, and and then uh, your solution will be reliable. Um, so you need to be able to. I think you that that when when pe- like the people who are building in this space need to be able to demonstrate that the solution that they're building is um, um, has these guarantees and that. There were, and that this solution is worth switching f- from away from kind of the the alternatives, uh, or the or not the alternatives, the more dominant solutions. And the other the other element is reputation. You know, so uh, a, like this space being really focused on um, on minimalizing centralized control means that we we talk about it as being like trust minimalized uh, technology, but like 
more and more, I find that we have to trust the people who who built who build it, because um, you know you can verify a lot of it yourself, but uh, there's not a lot of people doing a lot of this sort of ver verification. So your reputation really matters, um, and the reputations of the people that you work with. Um, so just to talk a little bit more about decentralization, um, as I mentioned, strong guarantees of openness, permissionless reliability. Um, and, and we have games involved that sustain it. And that's kind of like where you see a lot of the crypto currencies come into play is that the idea is that these are the, these are, this is the reward and, and possibly punishment uh, and, and bond so that, so that the systems that people develop will work uh, and will be sustainable so that everyone will play their part in a way that um, sustains uh, that sustains um, whatever solution it is that you've built. And so there are games involved that, that are there to secure them and the cryptocurrencies there as the incentive. So, um, you know, when we talk about decentralization, uh, it's, it's actually quite a painful thing in the space. And a lot of the pain in the space could simply be saw, uh, could probably be resolved with centralization. So you probably will see a lot of people temp and project teams tempted to um, take shortcuts on decentralization as a means of, of trying to get a stronger user base. And it'll look like they're winning, but I actually, you know, I'd submit that sacrificing decentralization is, is not how to win the long game in Web3. Um, and there are different kinds of decentralization, um, you know, token distribution, because tokens can often be synonymous with ownership of the network. Um, so if you only have a few, a uh, handful of individuals who own <laughs> the tokens and subsequently own the network, then it's uh, they, they control it. And so um, that those properties of openness, permissionless uh, might might be uh, might suffer as a result. There's infrastructure. So, you know, those who actually run the network, um, how distributed that is, that can really affect with the reliability of the network. Um, and then there's uh, those who are actually w building uh, and maintaining these uh, these decentralized applications. So is it just like one team? A lot of them start out that way, but gradually it's good to, I think it's good to have um, distributed um, contributors. Um, so so because decentralized, like because decentralization is hard, it's it's kind of resulted in a, a bit of a painful development and user experience, but but we see it as essential. Uh, on the reputation side, uh, in such a you know we we're in such a vast and interconnected, trust minimalized space. So our reputation is I think it's as as valuable as uh, as the work is that we're doing. So building a reputation for yourself and staying committed to the things that you value I think is is probably paramount. Um, um you know there are ways to do that uh like i mentioned a lot of things are happening on twitter um you can get involved you can ask questions in twitter conversations um and and those lead to further conversations uh i do this all the time and i still feel kind of like a dummy when i engage in some twitter conversations like i should know all the answers already but a lot of people really don't a, there are a lot of open questions and um it's just a really great way to to start and initially developing connections with other people who are interested in a lot of the same things that you are. Um, and then you know you can get into um, you can get into it can ask questions in Discord for specific projects. You can get involved. Uh, you can tinker with things yourself. A lot of this is open source. Uh, most of it, if not all of it, is open source, uh, and people are developing openly. Um, and then uh, reflect and write about your experience because um, the people that you're working next to know maybe what you're doing, but the broader community, they're, they don't know what you're doing. And so making what you do visible and what you've learned visible is people really value that. And it's a great way to meet other people that you didn't even know existed that might have common values or things to add or you know, relationships that are worth building. And then to get get out and, and really meet people, um, especially with, as, as things start to open back up, uh, things were really shut down with COVID. But, you know, prior to COVID, there were 
uh, crypto conferences, you know, every week, people used to kind of complain about it, like lament about how every week is another blockchain week somewhere, but it's a really global community. Um, and so the, you know, one of the ones that comes to mind, I'm going to in, in a couple of weeks, I'll be headed to ETH Denver. Um, Ethereum events are really great. Um, even outside, even even if you have interests outside of the specifically the Ethereum community, it's just very it's just a very open community, um, and you'll find that a lot of the other uh, ecosystem contributors show up at even even outside of the Ethereum community or uh, join the Ethereum events to host their own events. Um, so so. There's there's also a lot of funding in the space for for development. Um, there are really big treasuries, um, and and everybody's hiring. So foundations, DAOs, community treasuries, they're all looking to give away. They're almost looking to give away funding for a dedicated attention to solving various problems and contributing to their network. Um, Connor talks about Gitcoin grants as well, even outside of. Uh, you know, even if even if the thing that it is that you want to work on doesn't seem to fit into the mandate of existing sources of funding, there's there are always like Gitcoin grants as well, um, and it's more than just developers. Um, the, people are looking to hire and and looking for contributions from you know project managers, product builders, infrastructure providers, community builders, marketers, and there's so many other roles. Um, like I said, things are pretty rough around the edges. Um, people are building this kind of weird and crazy tech that is that kind of that's kind of isolated. Um, but now, as it all starts to connect together and form a, a bigger entity called Web three, um, there's still a lot of there's I think there's still a lot of distance to be bridged to take it from this really unfriendly technology to being um used seamlessly in our day-to-day -day lives um so we need we need people from all kind of walks of life and all different kinds of interests and expertise to be able to 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 make to to make that bridge happen um and and actually what's interesting is that i think a lot of these treasuries like i'm talking uh you know terra for example i think has like half billion dollar treasury looks like uniswap has like two billion dollars um like Gnosis DAO has about a half billion dollars. There, there are all these um, great big treasuries um, and, that are that are just waiting to be spent that actually aren't being spent. Um, and and maybe uh, part of the reason is we might want to look at at like who's building in the space right now. Um, and so so right now I, I I see like a diverse set of builders with a diverse set of values, which is really attractive and exciting. Um, there are a lot of like creative and visionaries and polymaths. So, you know, working in this space, it's a great way to get connected with a, with a group of really talented, unique people. Um, but if you were thinking about building in the space yourself, you might think to yourself, like, do I have to be a creative polymath visionary to be building? And, um, and historically, yeah, kind of. <laughs> and even the people who are, are kind of fit this this description uh like andre cronier is kind of famous for writing about how building in DeFi sucks um and you know, he would be considered one of the more successful innovators in the space and um and i think that's i think that's because uh there are a number of reasons why but um but you know there uh, the space being a, a little bit uh strange and a little bit dangerous to build in because there's uh, it's hard to build secure applications and there's a lot of people with a lot of money at risk and uh sorry pardon me for a second yeah so so there there's there's a lot of there are a lot of there's a lot of risk involved in building and a lot of people can lose a lot of money and you know the emphasis on things being very trust minimalized you've got and, and all this competition for attention so that people can make easy quick money it means that there are a lot of people on the lookout for grifters and scammers and so you know sometimes they can assume that people building in the space are potentially grifters and scammers um and so that's what i really like about what uh what agoric's building 
is that um, is that there's um, you know if you if you're a web developer, you're likely used to using JavaScript, and Solidity is one of the most one of the more well-known programming languages in the space, but it's really unfriendly. It's like known, it's got a reputation for being really unfriendly for, for developers because um, it's hard to formally verify it and there are lots of potential bugs and it's just, un it's just an unfamiliar development, development environment. So one of the things, so what I really like about Agoric is that, uh, you know, the, the ability for people to work in an environment that they're familiar with, with JavaScript, but in a secure way, to have these um, walled gardens and um, these modular, reusable, battle-tested DeFi building blocks, which I think will be really important to accelerating, accelerate the development and to onboard new developers. So, you know, if you are a developer um, or if you are thinking about founding a, you know, a project in the space, there's this this new potential that just wasn't there before. I think a lot of the other people uh, had to uh, really tread in areas where there be dragons, but this makes it, I think, the space a whole lot more um, accessible. So just want to wrap up here with a, some of the considerations, like why I work in Web3, and I'd say that it's because the opportunity space is vast. Uh, you know, if there's something you don't like about the status quo in finance, the internet, um, Etc. You know, there's an opportunity to to build something to disrupt that here. If you're a tinkerer uh, and you love to learn, this is a great space for that. It's a short path to working with, um, you know, smart, like-minded, uh, and, and complementary people. There's a lot of freedom and diversity, and it's a global community. It pays really well, and there's a lot of potential upside. Um, you could be at the forefront of what I think will be the next wave of public infrastructure, and um, you can start, you can contribute in a lot of different ways. Like you can, um, you can found a project, you can work for a DAO, which I don't know if you know what that is. Um, you can work as an independent contributor. You could work as an employee. And there's actually a really like quick path. There are a lot of people I know who started as employees are now becoming founders. Um, and then the last thing that really comes to mind is that, um, you know, you might think to yourself, is it even, is it a stable or uh, earning environment because crypto is so volatile? But um, a lot of a lot of these projects they raise in uh, U.S. dollars, so and they raise vast sums of money. So there's a very there's a lot of runway for these projects to be able to experiment and pay people to be parts of the part of those experiments and to develop these these products and projects. So uh, yeah, like I just. Great. Final, final thing is is that I really want to reiterate that mindset that Connor identified, that willingness to learn and have conversations. So find thoughtful people on Twitter and follow them, ask questions and go deeper, tinker and try committing to a contribution and attend events in real life. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amazing. Gavin. Thank you. Thank you, Gavin.